Garmin Fenix 6, Coros Apex Pro. It's kind of ridiculous how similar these two look. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave with Chase the Summit, and today we're gonna to be looking at the Coros Apex Pro. Coros first started with the Coros Pace, which was a budget-friendly device, and then they released the Coros Apex. They had a good price point at around $350. It's very popular in the trail and ultra running community. After the Coros Apex, they released the Coros Vertex, which had a much heavier price tag and wasn't quite as popular, and that's where the Coros Apex Pro comes in. This device aims to fill the gap that's between the Coros Apex in the Coros Vertex. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe down below and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it and it helps my channel grow. Also, if you're interested in any of these devices, make sure you use the affiliate links down in the description. It helps support my channel and it costs you nothing. Coros did provide this watch for review, but this is my full unbiased opinion. This is not a sponsored video at all. I've been wearing the Coros Apex Pro for about three weeks now. I've been sleeping with it. I've been running with it. I've been training with it. I've been going to work with it. I've been changing diapers wearing it. I've been doing all the things in my daily life that I expect out of a fitness tracker so I'd be able to form a well-rounded opinion on it and share my findings with you. This review is based purely from the perspective of a runner. I've run distances up to 100 miles in a single activity and on a typical training week I can run anywhere between 40 and 70 miles. This is usually a mixture of trails and roads so I rely heavily on my fitness tracker to give me an idea of where I'm at in my training and how I'm recovering. So let's get into the design and build quality of the Coros Apex Pro. To start, this is a 47 millimeter diameter watch, which is exactly the same as the Garmin Fenix 6. It's also 13 millimeters tall, which is almost identical to the Garmin Fenix 6. I think you can see a trend happening here. And overall, the aesthetics and design of it are very similar to guess what? the Garmin Phoenix 6. Currently it's shipping in this uh, lime green and gray color, but it also comes in an all black version. I originally hated this color, but it's really grown on me, so I'm kind of into it now. And if you don't love this lime green strap, don't worry, it is a 22 millimeter uh, quick release band, which is a very standard size and you can find them very cheap on Amazon or buy them directly from Coros. I like that they used a silver bezel rather than painting it. This will make scratches a lot less obvious on this device. The glass is made out of a sapphire crystal and the bezel is made out of a titanium alloy. The casing on the back of the device is an aluminum, it's not titanium. What's really amazing about the Coros Apex Pro is the weight. It comes in at 59 grams, which is pretty Pretty incredible compared to the Phoenix 6 which comes in at nearly 85 grams. It's actually almost the same weight as a Garmin Forerunner 945 which is an all plastic watch. The lightweight of this watch makes wearability excellent. I can sleep with it no problem. There's no sharp edges on it for you to like scrape on your face. Um, it's been very comfortable and even running with it you kind of forget it's there so that's really good. You have three buttons top being a dedicated light button, the middle being the select and digital crown and the bottom being a dedicated back button. The display Display on the Coros Apex Pro is also touch enabled, but it's pretty limited. We'll get into that in a little bit. Around the back of the device, you find the optical heart rate sensor and SpO2 reader. Uh, this watch does read blood oxygen saturation for people who train at altitude. This watch also features the same optical heart rate sensor that's found in its big brother, the Coros Vertex. And I found it to be pretty good. We'll get into that more in a little bit. What I like about the optical heart rate sensor on the Coros is that it's encapsulated in an aluminum backplate rather than Garmin, who kind of puts it in a plastic or a epoxy. And this epoxy tends to crack on the garments. The the display on the Coros Apex Pro is a 1.2 inch memory impixable, impixable. <laughs> memory in pixel display. I found that the sapphire lens on the Coros Apex Pro does produce a dimmer result. I'm not sure why this is. Maybe it's a thicker piece of sapphire or something. It's still perfectly functional. I just found it slightly dimmer compared to the other watches I have. All right, so let's talk about the user experience on the Coros Apex Pro. The user interface and software on the Coros Apex Pro is almost identical to that of the Coros Apex and Vertex. From the homepage or watch face, you can roll the digital knob to scroll through the various widgets available on the device. The widgets are phone notifications, temperature, barometer with forecast and storm alert, which is new, elevation, heart rate, and a summary of your day, which displays calories burned, steps, active time, and stairs climbed. These widgets are predefined out of the box. You can't add anything to it or remove them. Within the widgets is one of the few areas you can use the touch enable display. Any of the graphical widgets, you can click down on a digital knob and use your finger to swipe around. From the watch face or home page of the device, clicking down once on the digital knob will bring you into the activity selection page. The activities programmed on the Coros Apex Pro are all predefined. You can't add to or remove any of them. They include run, indoor run, trail run, track run, 
mountain climb, hike, bike, indoor bike, pool swim, open water, triathlon, gym cardio, and GPS cardio. Gym cardio is kind of a catch-all if you're just at the gym doing some form of cardio, you can use this to track your heart rate. And then GPS cardio is the same thing, but offers GPS tracking. I'm thinking like kayaking or something where you want a GPS track and you also want to collect heart rate data. From within the activity selection menu, you can also access the AI trainer. From within the AI trainer app, it gives you a view of your current stamina and your recovery level. Below that is a list of all of your recent activities. All of the activities in this list, you can dive deeper into to see their stats, Clicking and holding the back button for one second brings you into a quick selection menu. From within this menu, you can access the watch settings, set an alarm, use the stopwatch, and various other functions. This is also where you can access the navigation settings. Once you start an activity, you can swipe through the various data pages by using your finger on the screen or by rolling the digital crown. Both have the same effect. However, if you want to use the touch screen here, you need to go into the settings and enable touch screen swiping for activities. Again, the touch display doesn't add a whole lot here. It's easier just to use the digital knob in my opinion, but the option is available to you. Okay, let's talk about battery life on the Coros Apex Pro. It's good, very good. Much like all of the Coros devices, this is where the Coros Apex Pro shines. So in standard GPS tracking mode, that's full on GPS mode, you can get up to 40 hours of GPS tracking. If that's not enough for you, you can go up to 100 hours with Ultramax mode, but this does sacrifice a lot of GPS accuracy. I think for most people, 40 hours should be plenty. The battery spec that really shines, in my opinion, is standby mode. So if you're not using activities and you're just using it as like a smartwatch, this watch will go for almost a full month without needing a charge. Sometimes you even forget where the heck you put your charging cable because you never have to charge it. It's crazy. From within the Coros Android and iOS application, you can fully customize the watch face from a list of pre-configured watch faces they have available. This list is growing and it's gotten better, but is a limited selection. Within the Coros app is also where you can customize your activities to change what's on the data pages. You can add and remove data pages. You can add and remove fields. You can choose how many fields you want per page. And there's a good list of data fields available for you to add. The Coros app has come a long way. From the main dashboard of the Coros Android on iOS app, you'll be greeted with your active energy, which is basically just calories burned, exercise time, steps, heart rate, sleep, training load, fitness index, and fitness level. Personally, I haven't had great luck with this data. Uh, the fitness index and fitness level seem to go all over the place. For me, my VO2 max looks a little low. I'm not sure what metrics they use to base this data on, but it doesn't seem that accurate to me. And I had issues with this on the old Coros Apex along with the Coros Vertex. You can view all of this data in graphical form by week, month, or year. The next page of the Coros Android and iOS app is just a list of all of your recent activities. And this is laid out really cleanly. There's a small map. There's a little distance marker. It's very user friendly. You can also click the statistics button in the top right corner to see stats for like elevation gain and distance over time. This is a pretty handy feature as well. So you can see how you've been doing on a month by month basis as far as running distance goes. Diving into a particular activity will display all the nitty gritty metrics any runner wants to see. From here, you can also export a GPX file to upload to any third party apps. This watch does integrate directly with Strava, so you don't have to worry about that. And the integration is really quick and seamless. From within the profile page is where you can set up integration with third party apps like Strava. And here you can also import routes for navigation. As far as navigation goes, it's pretty simple. Once you've synced a route with your watch from within the app, you can access it by holding the back button, going into your quick selection mode, then going into Navi settings, selecting the course you want to use, and hitting start course. From within this menu, you can also access an elevation profile of the course and view a small breadcrumb map of the course. Once you've started navigating a course, you'll gain a few additional pages in your data selection fields, including a map that shows your current position over the course. I think this is probably the most useful area to use the touch screen. Basically, if you click down on the digital knob, you can zoom with the knob while panning with your finger on the screen. This actually works really well. Keep in mind that these maps are not topographic. You won't see road names or trails. It's basically just a breadcrumb trail with your position on it shown as an arrow. During any activity, you can also enter the Navi settings and route back to start. This is a pretty handy function if you've gotten lost and you wanna just get back to your car. The downside here though is it doesn't choose the shortest route back to start. I found this kind of odd. Basically, if you're on an out and back course and you've stopped uh, three quarters of the way through, it'll want you to retrace your steps all the way back to the start. On a Garmin, if you use back to start, it'll just take you directly back to start as long as you're on the course in some way. To gauge GPS accuracy, I took my Garmin Phoenix 6 and the Coros Apex Pro out on 
on several runs wearing both at the same time on the same wrist. Yes, I looked ridiculous. <laughs> in this particular example, I went on an out and back run that was 12 miles in duration. I did this because all the tracks should line up to be right on top of each other. And if they deviate at all, it means there's some fluctuation in GPS accuracy. Here you can see me comparing the tracks. The Garmin Fenix 6 is in red and the Coros Apex is in blue. While neither watch is dead on perfect, which is to be expected here, the blue Coros Apex Pro track is much closer to being on top of itself. This means it's slightly more accurate than the Garmin Fenix 6 in the same conditions. However, when I scroll a bit further down the course, you can see that the Coros Apex Pro does drift significantly in one area, but then it pulls itself back onto the... Despite these slight variations, both watches showed almost exactly 12 miles at the end of the run. One showed 12.01 and one showed 12.07. I'd say that's close enough for most people. However, when we move on to elevation recording, there's a different story. Elevation data on both the Coros Apex Pro and the Garmin Fenix 6 is collected by an onboard barometric altimeter. However, it seems that the Coros Apex Pro records this data a little bit differently. It, it seems to sample data every few seconds rather than a continuous feed. If you look at the graph here, you'll see that the, the blue Coros Apex Pro has kind of a stepped profile to it and the Garmin Fenix 6 is more fluid. I'm not sure why this is. Maybe Coros is trying to filter out our movement. Okay, let's move on to heart rate data, which is typically the weak point for a lot of watches. Here you can see the same 12 mile run. Again, the Coros Apex Pro is in blue and the Garmin Fenix 6 is in red. For the most part, the heart rate data is very consistent between the two devices. But again, I noticed that the Coros Apex Pro was sampled at a lower rate, creating more steps in the data. You can see at the start of my run, the Garmin spiked up quickly to about 140 beats per minute while the Coros Apex Pro takes a few seconds longer to get up to speed. But here's where things get a little bit weird. I started to push the gas a little bit harder near the end of the run to kind of get into an anaerobic zone. And I noticed that the Coros Apex heart rate wasn't raising as much as I expected. The Garmin Fenix 6 picked up a heart rate of almost 180 beats per minute, whereas the Coros Apex Pro stayed at around 160, 165 and never crept into the 170s or 180s but I know from my body that I was definitely in that zone. I was really trying to push it. Both watches were on the same wrist, so they should have exactly the same data. Take this testing with a grain of salt. I was not wearing a Bluetooth uh, heart rate strap or anything like that to have a basis of comparison. Both devices are definitely accurate enough to get a ballpark of your fitness level and your heart rate, but these aren't medical grade heart rate monitors. They are optical. None of them are perfect. Okay, all things considered, the Coros Apex Pro is a great GPS watch. It's attractive. It's reliable, it records pretty solid data, it competes with the Garmin Fenix 6, which is a beast of a watch, but there are a few things I'd like to see improved here. First off, the backlight. You can't turn it down or dim it. So basically it's super bright all the time. In a dark room, it's like you're wearing a flashlight on your wrist. The Coros app has gotten a lot better over time, but they still don't have a web environment. The VO2 max and fitness index scale isn't perfect. There's something going on there. I'd like to see them tweak that algorithm to make it a little bit more accurate for most people. Uh, treadmill accuracy has been hit or miss for me. I keep calibrating and calibrating every time I run on the treadmill, but it seems to either overshoot or undershoot every time. Another issue I have with the phone app is the constant Coros notification up in my notification tab. For some reason, the app requires a notification to always be there to have the syncing enabled. And if you try to swipe it away or get rid of it, the background syncing won't work anymore. I don't know why they need it there, but it's always there. The touchscreen. I think the touchscreen added to the cost of the device, but it doesn't add a whole lot of functionality to it. And with that, my final issue with the Coros Apex Pro is the price. This is a $499 watch. That is not cheap, and it really puts it in a bracket of competition that's uh, tough to beat. The first Coros Apex is $350. I feel like it's a better bang for your buck, but the Coros Apex Pro is a beast. It has better battery life. It's got the touch screen. It's more waterproof. It looks a little bit more durable, but at $499, there's so much competition out there it's hard to say it's a good buy. So that's not to say the Coros Apex Pro is a bad device. I think it's right for the right person. If you're a minimalist and you like things just to work reliably without a lot of fuss and bloat, the Coros Apex Pro is a great watch. You can just take it out of the box, pair it with your phone, takes two seconds and start running. I think the Coros environment has potential. I like how simple it is. I like how things just work as expected out of the box. But if you want the maps, you want the music, you want the Wi-Fi, all of the technology, you're gonna have to buy a Garmin. 
I mean, that's just the way it is. Anyways, that's all I got for today. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Kroos Apex Pro. Also make sure to subscribe down below and give me a thumbs up if you thought this was a helpful video. It really means a lot to me and it keeps my channel going. And I wanna thank all of you for getting me past the 2000 subscriber mark. That's very exciting for me. I never thought I'd be there. And let me know what you think about the Kroos Apex Pro. Do you have one? Do you have a regular Apex? Do you think it's worth the upgrade? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.